I'm James Isaacson, and you're watching The Graduate Spotlight. I work at a prop studio called Studio Art and Technology. It's a very, very fun place to work. One of the best parts is that I got in because of my connections through Cinema Makeup School, one of my dear friends from here, Ed. And the, the basic jobs that we're doing and the skill sets you can learn here at Cinema Makeup School, which is really, really great because I was able to jump transition basically from makeup to props very easily at the prop studio. I've been able to work on some very cool projects through for Disney, for Marvel, Star Wars, Star Trek. I've been able to cross off so many bucket list items at the prop studio. I've been on Who is America, which is a very awesome show. Always been a big fan of Sasha Baron Cohen and his comedy. I've been a part of Zombieland 2, which is awesome. Everybody wants to work on a zombie movie. Got to do that one with some of my best friends from CMS. And it was a pretty big job. We were creating hundreds of prosthetics a day for about three weeks straight. Some recent projects that were pretty cool to work on was the TV show on Netflix of Sweet Tooth. I got to help make the pig girl's prosthetics with her nose and her ears. And then the other big one, this was really cool because it was my first full creature suit, was the angel from Midnight Mass, and being able to run all the foam latex for that. That was pretty wild. I've certainly worked on a lot of gore. I used to make dead bodies for a living and dead body parts, heads, eyes, fingers, toes, arms, legs, dismembered, dismembered torsos. I've done it all with the gore, which is pretty awesome growing up on all the 80s horror movies. Zombieland 2 was a really fun job because it was being shot down in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was kind of shopped out to two different special effects studios. We got to handle the bulk of the prosthetics, which was really, really awesome, because it was over 100 prosthetics a day that we had to create in the morning, un get ready for shipping in the afternoon, then ship that afternoon. It was a team of the three of us churning, working together like a perfect team to get it all out. Coming from Cinema Makeup School, I was immediately brought on to help one of the instructors, Chris Kobzina, in his studio for a proof of concept short. There I got to work with Devin McDonough and Ed Malice, who are both CMS graduates. So it was the four of us working on this proof of concept in Chris Kobzina's personal shop for two months. That was absolutely fantastic. Then from there, I came back and I was able to intern back in the CMS labs, learn some more there, meet more people, help out more students. Then I began working at WM Creation. While I was working at WM Creations, it was awesome because we were working on a lot of the crime procedural shows. So it was requiring all of the dead bodies, body parts, heads, fingers, toes, all of it. Quite a wild, surreal kind of, I'm gonna have to get used to this experience. Coming in at seven, starting my day with my morning coffee, then having to open up the binder of reference material to go make that decapitated torso that I needed to make. So that was pretty, pretty fun, pretty wild. You know, you get desensitized to it pretty quickly. One of my favorite experiences from WM Creations was my first celebrity life cast that I ever got to do was of Robert Patrick, AKA the T-1000 from Terminator 2. I told him that I have a very special connection to that movie because Terminator 2 was released the day and year that I was born, July 3rd, 1991. I'm forever as old as that movie. I got to tell Robert Patrick that he got a kick out of it. And a few years later, when I saw him again at a convention, he remembered who I was. It's unbelievable knowing that a Terminator remembers who I am, especially the bad Terminator. I decided to enroll in Cinema Makeup School because it's a premier makeup school and I had always wanted to make movie magic, make some monsters, make some gore. This was the place to do it and I'm certainly glad that I did. Working as a special effects makeup artist has always been a dream of mine because my father, when I was a child, used to do his own Freddy Krueger makeup at home, which of course, the whole dream nightmare connection. Seeing that, experiencing that, and being able to see him transform into something that scared me really stuck with me and when I realized that you could do that for a living, I knew I absolutely had to. My interests definitely include dinosaurs. Jurassic Park was a very huge element of why I pursued this career. It's a movie that I grew up with, that I absolutely adored and idolized. 
I also love horror and especially kinds of body horror. So things like The Thing and all of David Cronenberg's filmography. Absolutely love, I find those very, very unsettling. The type of horror that I enjoy is anything that is humanoid, but not quite human. Something that's like us, but is different enough to scare us. Science fiction has always been a love of mine as well, going all the way back to Alien, and that xenomorph with H.R. Giger just changed everything. The Thing was always really, really influential on me. Rob Bottin's work with all of those different monsters was phenomenal, all of the body suits and the prosthetics that everybody had to wear and put up with through that movie. It was very, very important to me. Coming back is like coming home. It's just somewhere you spent so much time at and so much time working hard and it's just such a wonderful community here. Everybody's family. I'm still friends with a lot of my peers and my classes, my instructors. I've been able to work with people from CMS at actual professional jobs in the, in the industry. And it's just awesome being able to establish these relationships now and see how they develop professionally. My favorite part about being a student was being able to learn from all these people that have worked on all of the things that have inspired me. Being able to come in and know that my instructor worked on a movie that's the direct reason why I'm here, it was just electric. Chris Kobzina and Shannon Shea, Michael Spatola, Nelly, they've all been phenomenal and I, I'm so thrilled to be able to be in the same industry in the league, same league as they are. Some artists that have always inspired me across various mediums have been H.R. Giger through the Xenomorph and all of his bizarre, twisted, delightful nightmares that he's created. I've absolutely loved him. There's infinite inspiration from Masahiro Ito in his work with the Silent Hill franchise. I've absolutely loved Rob Bottin. He got me into all of this because of The Thing and watching that on repeat as a kid. And then a new artist that I've been really enjoying is Mira Lee. She's a phenomenal, phenomenal artist in sort of the same league as Giger in creating these very bizarre, twisted, special effects nightmares. My process has always begun by daydreaming, like most of us. And I come up with something or an idea and then I expand on it and it just kind of worms its way into my head so then I just think about it more and then I'll catch myself doodling it. And once I start doodling it, I know that I have to bring it to reality. A nice personal project that I've been working on is something called Wasteland Mythology, where I'm taking, readapting, I should say, the classic Greek mythology and all of their gods and goddesses and nightmarish creatures and adapting them into a wasteland survival situation as if they were real people just like us, but now in a post-apocalyptic world. It's been great because it's been involving makeup, hair, costume, wardrobe, photography, editing. So I'm kind of trying to challenge myself and hitting the gamut of everything with them. If you're 50-50 or on the fence about coming to cinema makeup school, you should know that it's absolutely worth it. The connections that you're going to make, the networking opportunities you'll have, everything you're going to learn and ascertain through your instructors, through your peers, you're not going to be able to get it anywhere else. It's just, this is the hub for it, and I've never been more thankful for an opportunity than what I've been able to get through CMS. One of the things that I learned going to cinema makeup school is sometimes you're in a grind, you're in a slog. There's so much work to be done. You're in the middle of it, the thick of it. The trick is to just keep going. Just break down your project into smaller bullet points so you have different goals that you're working for and that you can easily achieve. Because once you're able to start crossing things off of a list, you'll start feeling better. You'll start feeling motivated. The other thing that I realized was never lose sight of what your end project is. The excitement of daydreaming a project and bring, being able to bring it to life, there's nothing quite like it. That reward and that payoff is fantastic. One of my most difficult projects during my time at Cinema Makeup School was for my special effects final. I wanted to make this horrible creation inspired by Masahiro Ito's work, and it was basically this skin graft martyr creature where it had flesh that was just missing with the raw skin exposed underneath it. But I wanted to take it a step further and I wanted to have actual skin graft texture on top of it. So I had to design my prosthetic to fit the skin graft texture, make a skin graft sheet of flesh basically to fit over it, 
Then, because I don't think that was enough, I made these disgusting flesh tentacles that was just connecting to the face, and I did those with blood tubing inside them so it would bleed all over this poor, poor model. Casey, I'm still sorry. So the creature would bleed whenever I would push through all of the blood into these flesh tentacles. One of the most important things to do is to keep your resume, your website, and your IMDb up to date. They're proofs of what you've worked on, what you're working on, and you can always use them to help negotiate your, your rates for studios or for on-set work because people can look at your experience and the caliber of your talents and what you've worked on. What you've worked on speaks very greatly for who you are and what your skills and abilities are. Things that I like to keep on my resume are all of my professional jobs. I don't need to put my high school jobs or my college jobs on there. There's not really a place for that. I keep it professional. If you've started doing special effects makeup before you attended cinema makeup school, you can keep it on there for the first year or so. But once you graduate from the school and start working professionally, take off anything before your time at cinema makeup. When I'm looking to bring somebody on to help me out with a personal project or a job, I like to see their work. Work is always a good thing to look at first. But I like to know what their type of personality is. Are they excited? Are they outgoing? Are they upbeat? Are they a hard worker? Is there anybody that they know that I know, any mutual friends? Because then I'll ask them if they know them. And then you get right back into the whole networking conversation. And it's great. Old self, if you're still listening, my pieces of advice would be to pick up more art. Don't put down paintbrushes. Start sculpting now. Start drawing, painting now. You'll thank myself later. Second would be, don't underestimate digital art and being able to work in Photoshop to come up with these designs or ZBrush. And the third one would be start immersing yourself in even more special effects. Look at what's been done before and how you can improve that. A lot of what we do is building on what's already been done, but trying to find better ways to do it to make it look more real, more fun, more gruesome if it needs to be, or more beautiful. Lethal Weapon, this was the first professional job I did at WM Creations. We got to make a burned woman's corpse. It was just as gross as it sounds, but it was even more fun than you can imagine. Those are going to be forearm prosthetics for a costume that I'm working on, a Valtiel from Silent Hill 3, designed by Masahiro Ito. There's going to be a full latex mask that goes along with those, and it's going to be a very gross costume. Ah. That's my certificate for the Leonard Engelman Fellowship for Character Development. I earned that while I was a student at CMS. I was specifically selected to join that program, and it was a weekend of fantastic, fantastic memories and knowledge. That is my Robert Patrick autograph from my first Celebrity Life Cast. He signed it, thanks for the death mask, because we kept making jokes about how a life cast is just a death mask for who you are at that point in time. That was Tyler the Creator, the famous rapper. We worked on a music video of his at WM Creations for Who Dat Boy. We made the prosthetics that he wears, and I made the separate heads in the background of one of the shots. That is my poster that I keep in my personal studio for Who Is America, starring Sasha Baron Cohen. I worked on all of the prosthetics for that at Alterian, working for Tony Gardner. We did all of the various characters that he portrays. That was one of the best teams that I've ever been able to work with, ever. Got to meet Ken Banks, Tony Gardner, Aaron Romero. It was a fantastic job. This is Athena from my Wasteland Mythology project, the Goddess of Wisdom. That was for the same uh, series that I'm working on of adapting Greek mythology into a post-apocalyptic wasteland survival situation. That is a severed torso that I got to make for NCIS while at WM Creations. It was an extremely fun job because it was the torso and then a bunch of other various body parts. But the gag was it was a body that was found in a river that had been there for two months. So we had to make the silicone extremely soft so it looked like the skin was falling off. It was disgusting in a great way. I'm James Isaacson, and thank you for tuning in to Graduate Spotlight. <laughs>